Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I am going to stick with my theme for the past few videos, which is using large language models or understanding large language models and using them in getting certain tasks done. In the last video, I talked about how you can train your own PDF file and then ask questions about the PDF file, right? In a conversational manner. So in this one, let's actually do some data analysis. And this is literally in its infancy. Please keep an eye on these type of techniques because ChatGPT just came out a few months ago and we already see all kinds of advancements. And keep watching my videos to learn more about uh, these type of uh, language models or more importantly, a Python based image analysis, data analysis, and so on. And if you want to be notified of future videos, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. And while you're doing that, always try to find that thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, so the goal for today's video is to literally not take too much time, show you a new library that I discovered called Pandas AI. And again, it's in its infancy, and I have a feeling it will grow into a much bigger. Uh, library that can be useful. So basically the essence is you have a data frame or you have a CSV file, you load it into Python and uh, normally what do we do? We do uh, use pandas. I definitely recommend you guys to learn pandas and how to wrangle the data, how to organize them, how to group them, how to extract insights, but looks like we may not have to do that in future because with pandas AI most of the stuff can be done automatically in the background and you just need to ask questions because as data analysts, what you want is insights from certain type of data. So that's a more than one, one and a half minute of me talking, but let's just jump into code and see exactly how to get that thing done. And I am going to use, uh, like I mentioned, a library called Pandas AI. I leave the link as part of description, but you can easily find it using Google search. And as you can see, it's constantly updated. This was like two days ago, two days ago. So it's relatively new. Expect that to grow and they have examples and everything. So go ahead and follow their examples. But I am summarizing what they have actually given there anyway. And uh, also it's going to use OpenAI. We are going to use OpenAI as the language model because you need to define something. I haven't tested this with Hugging Chat or uh, any of those uh, open source like free ones, but but OpenAI is something where you need to pay for API access and it's not uh, it's not super expensive if you want to test it out obviously if you want to deploy it as an application so thousands of other people use it then you better have a good monetary model to make uh, economic sense out of this whole thing but uh, OpenAI go to API keys once you have an account go ahead and create a new secret key which I did and I copied it and I pasted that in a file called .env I'll show you how that file looks like just by showing you the template. Obviously, I don't want to show you my uh, API key. And if you go to usage, you can see how um, I just started using like a few days ago. So you can see how I spent seven bucks in the last few days. So it can add up, especially if you're not from US or Western Europe where a dollar may, uh, is not as much money, you have the luxury of doing this. But if you're from some of the Eastern countries, then that may be a lot of money. So please be careful when you're, uh, when you're working with this type of uh, APIs. Okay. And uh, while I have the browser open, I just want to show you one final thing, the data set that I want to play with. Of course, you want to work with the data set that you have, uh, but uh, I just thought we should use something fun. And I looked at NBA player stats. I know there is nothing like 2023 stats yet, but 2022 stats also, I mean, there is probably uh, 2022 stats somewhere. I found this, I thought, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's work with this one. Yeah, it's just NBA. Hopefully most of us can relate to this. And down here, they give exactly what different rows are, what columns are. We have 30 attributes or columns and they are, uh, the rank, the player's name, their position, their age, what team they played for, how many games played, how many games they actually started of all the games played. And some of the numbers that we'll play with is three-point field goals per game, how many three-point field goals they made, how many three-point field goals they attempted, so free throws per game, and so on. Yeah. And if you're looking for defensive statistics, then you can look at how many blocks they did, how many steals. So there is a lot of uh, stuff that you can play with if you're, uh, if you're interested in. I played with a few because obviously I don't want to burn my API credits. Uh, every time I run this, it's two to three uh, cents. So I'm a bit mindful of how I use it because I may 
be coming up with more tutorials. I don't know. <laughs> okay, with that information, let's go ahead and jump into the code itself. And what files do I have? Dot n, where I have my API key. How does that look like? It looks like this. Uh, if I just zoom in, <coughs> it's nothing but openAI underscore API key equals to within your quotes, you put your API key. This is obviously a dummy one where I put ABCDEF, but you will have a real one, I hope. Okay, so that's the API key, or you can pass the API key directly from here. Obviously, I'm doing a tutorial. I don't want to reveal my API key. Okay, now uh, that's the that's the environment right there, and I have the CSV file that I downloaded from from the place I just showed you. In fact, if I open that in Notepad++, you can see all the columns and everything right there. Yeah, rank, player, position, and all that stuff. Okay, so we know that, and the Python file I'm just showing you here. Yeah, I'll show the uh, I'll share the Python file again. Find the link down under the description. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and get started. I want to import .env. Why do I want to import .env? Because when I load .env, it's going to look at .env file in this directory, and then it says, okay, I loaded that. So it's basically a way of loading your secret key. So let's go ahead and do that. True, that means it found it, and we are good. Now I can use my OpenAI. Go ahead and install Pandas AI. It's just as simple as pip install Pandas AI, like, like these guys showed here. Uh, where is it? So if you scroll down, pip install Pandas AI. That's it, no tricks. Yeah, it worked fine right away. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course you need to import Pandas so you can kind of work with it. Okay, so how do we get started? First thing first, uh, do I need to zoom in one more step? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So you can see, <coughs> let's uh, let's load our pandas. Uh, I mean our CSV file, and I'm pretty sure most of you know how to do that. It's pandas.readcsv. In this case, this file uses some special characters. It took a while for me to figure out why in the world is it not loading, and then I looked at some of the encodings. A couple of encodings did not work, and this one actually worked out. So this is. Uh, this is how I'm reading it. And also the delimiters between the between the data is not just a comma, it's a semicolon. So that's what I provided here. So once you do that and go ahead and print the column names, you should be seeing all the column names. Rank, player, position, age. This TM uh, is the team name. And when I looked at the data, the team actually has another team called TOT, which I think they just wanted to put total numbers under TOT, that's not a real team. So the next step I'm doing here is, hey, I want a data frame with everything except drop everything that has the the, the you know characters TOT. So that's what we will get there. And uh, yeah, the column should not change. The column should still remain same. We are not dropping any columns. It's just that we're uh, dropping some entries, some rows that actually contain TOT. So far, so good, I hope. Until this point, you probably know what we are talking about. If I go to Variable Explorer and open my data frame, you should see uh, what the data frame looks like. So you have the rank of the player, uh, the and the player name itself, and position, age, uh, and so on. So you can see all the values right here. And all of these teams now should make sense. Toronto, Memphis, Miami, Memphis, Brooklyn, uh, I guess that's New Orleans Pelicans, uh, Utah. So you can recognize all of those. Okay, there you go. And now let's start doing the magic, which is typically at that point, we would actually say, uh, you know, group these by country, sorry, country, group these by team, group these by position, whatever. Of course, you have a lot more power if you know how exactly to do that and if you have time to come up with all of that code, but you can use OpenAI. For example, let's do that. That's that's the whole tutorial about. Uh, and from pandas AI, I'm importing llm.openai and import openai. Again, this is where I hope to see more open source and free large language models because you don't need like super duper amazing large language models to get these type of tasks done. So, okay. So we initiated our LLM or we defined what our large language model is. Now let's go ahead and provide that large language model as part of our pandas AI and I am passing conversational equals to true. When you do that on the screen uh, down here, you'll see, you'll see some conversations. You'll understand why Pandas AI actually made certain decision. 
in the plain text form. So let's start by asking a question. Now that we have a Pandas AI object, let's go ahead and run, providing the data frame as input and asking a question about the data frame. In this case, the question is, who was the oldest player in the league? That's an easy question, right? We can easily find that out using uh, Pandas, but we don't have to do that. We know we want that information, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so I got an, a message about existing connection being oh, forcibly closed. Apparently, I had like another API connection going on. Maybe I was doing something in the command prompt or something and I didn't turn it off. It doesn't matter. It closed it. Now I ran this again. So now you have, oh, uh, that's, the, that's the answer, right? So it, it can actually, if you turn the conversational equals to false, it would have just uh, printed Udonis Haslam, but... Now that I have conversational equals to true, it says, oh, the oldest player in the league? Well, that would be Udonis Haslam. Well, we can go back and check actually, if that's the case. I don't even know how uh, how old Haslam is, but uh, yeah, can we find that out here age, age wise? I don't even know how to find this guy. So we can try this with pandas, but let's not worry about it. Uh, so I, I trust this, <laughs> I trust this. Uh, uh, system so okay now the next question who are the top three players now increasing complexity I just want to go to the next level uh, that's the easy one now who are the top three players that had the most defensive rebounds and how many each right now we are getting into a bit of a descriptive now let's go ahead and do that okay so it says according to the stats the top three players with the most defensive rebounds are Rudy Gobert Nikola Jokic with 11 each followed by Joel Embiid. So it basically says these two guys, uh, Gobert and uh, Nikola Jokic. I mean, I don't know why it put question mark there. Maybe that's how it is, the name in there. I have to go back and check. But they both have uh, 11 each, followed by Joel Embiid with 9.6. It answered it exactly the way I asked, right? So now let's go to the next one, plot. Now we are not just asking questions about who. Now go ahead and do the plotting because you know pandas, you can do plotting, right? So plot the three point per game. Now I'm being very descriptive. Go ahead and try not giving enough description because then it may not understand exactly what you want. Then it will plot something different. So that's why I'm being very deliberate here. Plot the three point game versus total score for each player on a scatter plot with small dots. And do not label with player name initially did that and the plot looked uh, very busy. So let's run this and see how it looks like. We are, I'm just looking for a scatter plot of this three points versus total score. You know, so that tells you, okay, how many three points contribute to the total score in a way. Or you can just ask it to do ratios that I haven't done that before. Okay, so can you create a scatter plot with small the, the, the blah, 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 my question. Please only label and did it actually plot? Oh, okay, I re repeated my question, but there is the plot. Three points per game and total score for each player. And as you can see, uh, more three points does not necessarily mean more total score or higher points, right? So that's uh, that's the essence I take out of here. And uh, now let's move on to the next one. Again, each of these questions is giving me some insight about what's going on in the NBA. Next one, please group all players for each of these positions. I want like uh, uh, these positions, you know, uh, forwards and point guards and uh, centers and so on, and then plot three point per game okay, as a function of position. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to understand if certain position tend to score more three-pointers. In fact, I asked the question about, hey, uh, the, do, do uh, the three-point scores, you know, do they uh, depend on uh, something? I tried to frame it, but I wasn't good enough to frame it such a way that it understands exactly what I want to do. That's why I was being a bit more deliberate here, in case you wonder what's going on. Again, I definitely assume most of these things will improve as this library gets uh, uh, more and more contributions from the community, then we should be able to ask questions directly. And remember, at no point I, I told this to what a point guard is, right? So when I say, uh, this is an important point I wanted to tell you. So when I say pl plot the three point per game versus total score, I did not tell what the three point uh, is what the total score is because all it knows is this all it knows is this data frame and it kind of in a way interpreted that 3p is three points 3p a is three point average and so on so i it's already working great 
because I didn't deliberately tell what that is, right? So, uh, so that's the, uh, and here, defensive rebounds, right? So it probably looked at DR and it's like, okay, these are defensive rebounds, which can lead to errors, but in this case, not much. It's, it's actually working great. Okay, so we got this plot, sure, to answer the question, what did it do? I grouped all the players by their positions, okay? See how it's elaborating, SG, I just said SG. It's like, okay, let me let me interpret that. Shooting guard, small forward, point guard, power forward, and center. And then I plotted the average number of three-pointers per game and blah, 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 and where is the plot, and there you go. So based on this, point guards are the ones who score most three points per game, followed by your uh, shooting guards, and then so on, okay? And the least is going to be the centers, understandably. Okay, so now let's end this uh, by looking at the last one, which is plot a bar plot of all teams showing the average age of players. I, I want to find out what who is the oldest team and who is the youngest team and how do they rank. So it's obviously what goes behind this is first it looks at all the players within a team, right? It has to look at the average or total either way. And then it has to kind of do that for each of these teams and then plot them. So it involves a bit, if we want to do this ourselves, it involves a few steps, but there you go, right there. Okay, the team should be, uh, what did they do? I can help you with that. We need to create a bar plot that displays the average age. The teams should be arranged in descending order based on their average age from the oldest to the youngest. So it says average age. So that's what it calculated, not the total age, even though it should be okay either way, assuming total number of players are same. So is that what you were looking for, right? I don't know if this is conversational, meaning if I can say, yes, I'm looking for this, or no, can you do this? I think it'll become more conversational in future, but right now this is where we are, and that's an amazing plot that shows you exactly what we are looking for. So I hope you really found this tutorial to be useful. This is a very short one, introducing you to this Pandas AI so you can appreciate how the world is changing rapidly in front of our eyes, where we used to deliberately code a lot of stuff, and now we need to be good at expressing our feelings uh, via chat, and then let the technology take over. Okay guys, thank you very much and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and let's meet in the next tutorial.